Hey, Chester, I wanted to follow up on our last conversation. You know, we talked about the need for flexible, high performance, and efficient infrastructure. You know, the kind you typically only see behind the curtain at hyperscalers, but that everyone else needs as well. Yeah, we talked about a lot of different ways that you can solve this problem, each of which has their own trade-offs. But given the availability of a high-speed storage fabric and a high-speed network fabric, really what you want to do is completely disaggregate your resources into separate pools of compute, storage, and network. Right, and we talked about how one of those approaches commonly used is HCI, hyperconverged infrastructure that places data management, uh, data protection, and network overlay in software, chewing through a lot of CPU cycles in the process. Right, and those are absolutely delivering on flexibility. Uh, the issue there is that they're neither fast nor efficient. Right, I've, I've seen these, uh, these memes where you see a performance funnel of some really fast SSDs that are giving you millions of IOPS and then it goes down through the software stack and then what ends up being delivered to the application is like a couple, you know, tens of thousands of IOPS. Now, I have to think that not all of the solutions out there are nearly that bad, but they probably aren't very good either. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there are some solutions that are emerging uh, that do bring us closer to this promise of uh, flexible, powerful, disaggregated resources. How so? Uh, think about like PCI switching. Well, wait a minute. Isn't PCIe the, the, the bus that's inside the server? <laughs> yes, usually inside the server. But what we can do is take uh, PCI extension cables from the x86 and connect them to uh, a PCI switch in the same rack, which has access to devices like um, NVMe drives and NICs. And that allows us to you know, build a server from the various disaggregated components that we need. Right, so you've got flexibility, but you're running a separate PCIe fabric. And you know, one of the things that we talked about is the fact that people like the simplicity of HCI because you're running everything on standard Ethernet. Yeah, that is absolutely true. And the other thing to think about is uh, these fabrics really only provide access to raw PCI devices. So you're probably still going to want storage services like um, you know, redundancy, compression, encryption. Um, and at the end of the day, since the fabric's not doing that for you, uh, you're going to still need to do that in software, which is going to run on the x86 and be slow and chew up CPU cycles. Um, to add to that, these PCI fabrics are distance limited. They use expensive cabling. Um, and then they're just new gear to manage that nobody really wants to deal with. Right. And so because of that distance limitation, you're not able to pool resources data center wide, so you're not getting all of the benefits of disaggregation, and you're still siloed, right? Yeah. Okay, so what we need is a disaggregation solution that's wicked fast, works at data center scale, and places all of these data management, data protection, data security services in hardware as opposed to software, so your CPU cycles are focused on applications instead of your infrastructure. That's exactly what we're building right now. We're calling it the Fungible Data Center, or FDC, and it's a bare metal data center solution that finally brings to bear the various aspects that we want. Performance, flexibility, scale, simplicity, all in one. Right, powered by the DPU, and you know we've been working on a lot of uh, materials and videos out there so people can find out about the DPU because it's still fundamental to our innovation. Exactly. So now that you um, kind of understand the idea of a fungible data center, what do you think one would look like? Okay, so what I'm envisioning is a bare metal cloud that has all the conveniences and efficiencies of a public cloud. So that means, you know, easy one-click deploy of complex applications, applications scale up and scale down, all wrapped around a multi-tenancy model that allows you both isolation and delegation of the management of your infrastructure. And all being done without all of the performance penalties and overhead that we typically get when we're deploying to the public cloud. That's exactly what we're gonna deliver. So let me explain a little bit about how that works. First, you take a diskless server with the CPU and memory specs that you might need uh, to run the various workloads that you have in your environment. Uh, by making them diskless, we're reducing the need uh, for different server variants that you might want to deploy. And because we've done that, uh, you also don't need to deploy workload specific uh, spares, right? Instead, we can create a data center wide pool of resources 
which handled both spares and any scale in need to do. So you're buying fewer servers mm -hmm. for more work. That's saving a lot of money. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'd like to think so too. Um, all of this though is really only feasible just now, and it's all because we're powered by the DPU. So each of these diskless servers actually has a DPU, uh, which offloads and handles the storage and networking functions, which would otherwise be serviced by the slow and inefficient x86 cores. Uh, each of these servers' DPUs connects to other DPU-enabled devices, like Fungible's FS1600 storage arrays. And the really nice thing here is we're really using standard stuff. So TCP, Ethernet, standard industry tours, nothing too special going on here. Which is really what people need today, right? They don't want new gear. So let's back up a little bit and talk about what happens at a server level. Okay, so first let's think about what happens when we want to create an instance. Um, to start, we lay out a disk image onto an NVMe volume that comes from the AllFlash FS1600. Now, the great thing about doing this is that layout, that um, copying is happening inside the DPU, which makes it super efficient and makes it super fast. Um, right, not so, using a CPU. Right, so now we have um, our volumes ready and it's time to actually boot the server. So what do we do? We take that remote volume that's running on the FS1600 and we present it as a local NVMe device to the server. So, you know, server comes up, boosts the OS image, and you're pretty much up and running. Um, the other thing we can do here is create uh, virtual NICs, which can connect to any virtual network, uh, which you can pretty much build on the fly. And the other thing that's really great about this is because the DPU is so fast, you really no longer need to care about locality within the data center. So servers over here, uh, storage over there, really doesn't matter. That's a huge difference for how people typically manage and deploy their the assets in their data center today. Location is everything. Location, location, location. So really at the data center scale, we have the flexibility then to match any workload to the equipment needed to deliver it. How is this, uh, how is this all managed? Right, so one thing that I think people are really going to like is key to our design and architecture is the ability to delegate the management of various resources. So if a data center operator wants to delegate the management of the servers or the storage or virtual networks, they can absolutely do that. And we have made sure to address um, challenges from this new interconnected world, which include network integration, uh, overlapping IP addresses uh, and security. All of these things are addressed. You know, service providers are really going to love that because they need a lot of these capabilities to, to serve their customers. And then meanwhile, you know, we're seeing that kind of tenancy model extended to enterprises so that people can delegate and you know, get out of the way of innovation. Yeah. Another thing that I think people are going to really love is our one-click deployment templates. Uh, so folks can use known good recipes either from Fungible or from their local data center operator uh, to streamline and standardize their application deployments. We also use other common techniques to the public cloud, uh, like cloud init, to better enable provisioning and scale up, scale down. Wow, this really sort of kind of sounds uh, compromise free. And we give everybody what they need to start with immediately. Yeah, I mean, we've really designed the Fungible data center to be easy to deploy, easy to use, um, and to work at whatever scale you need. So I think people are going to be really interested in what we have to offer. I can tell you I'm really interested, so I'm going to go check out our website, look at some of our materials, and learn more about FTC. Great. Looking forward to it.